Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll start getting deeper into MATLAB. We'll start with a tour of the UI. That's short for the user interface. In other words, what you see on screen and interact with. The initial default MATLAB UI contains several elements which we'll examine in turn in this video and the next. There's the tool strip, the path bar, the current folder window, the details window, the command window, and the workspace. Other windows come and go as needed, and we'll get to those in time. Let's start at the top with what MATLAB calls the tool strip, but which some other programs would call a ribbon. Here you'll find buttons for many common actions, creating scripts, creating new files, opening existing files, searching and comparing files, importing data, creating and saving variables, and our old friend preferences, which you'll remember from the last video. Most of the actions and commands found on the tool strip can also be executed by typing commands into the command window. Whether you want to click a button or type a command is purely personal preference. For the most part, we'll be typing commands in the command window. Two entries on the tool strip are worth looking at now. The first is layout. This allows you to rearrange the windows that make up the MATLAB interface. You can choose a two-column layout with the command window at the right and all others to the left. You can give most of the screen over to the command window with the others sliding out as necessary. Or you can give the whole screen over to the command window. You can also drag windows to create other displays, for instance, tabular. Arrange your screen any way that makes you comfortable and helps you to get work done, but we'll stick with the default for these videos. The other button of note is Help. In your career, you'll discover that the quality of help documentation in the world varies from excellent to almost useless. Fortunately, MATLAB's web-based help documentation is some of the best out there. There are several ways into the help system. If you're looking for something specific, such as the name of a function or command, you can use the search documentation box. Or, you can just click Help to go to the home page of the Help website and search further from there. Every function in MATLAB is meticulously documented, including code examples. You'll also find tutorials and other informational pages. Help is your friend, and you should not only look things up when you're stuck or confused, but you'll also benefit from just poking around and reading what catches your eye. There's a lot to be learned up there. We talked about the current folder window in the last video, and there's not much more to be said about it. You can navigate around as though it were the File Explorer, and also rename and delete files. The path bar contains the path to the current folder in a breadcrumb form. In this form, you can click on any folder in the path to go directly there. If you click in the box away from the path, the path collapses to its text form which you can copy and paste into a command, saving you some typing. The command window is where you'll do most of your general non-programming work. Here you can define variables, call scripts and functions, perform tasks like loading and saving files, and other calculator-like actions. The double greater than sign is called the command prompt, and it's where you'll enter your commands. All the standard arithmetic operators are available, for instance, addition. Notice how MATLAB gives the answer as ANS equals 612. ANS is a default variable where MATLAB stores an answer that isn't assigned to a specific variable. Also notice that it's now shown at the left, in the workspace, 
We'll get more into that in the next video. Of course, you also have subtraction, multiplication, which uses an asterisk, and division. You can also raise a number to a power using the caret character, which is often found on a keyboard as the shift of the 6 key. 4 squared. Spaces are optional when using these operators in an equation. 1 plus 1 with spaces around the plus sign works fine, as does 1 plus 1. And speaking of spaces, we're rich in white space here, so let's tighten up this display. That's done using the format compact command, which makes everything single spaced. To revert to the original double spacing, the command is format loose. This is one of those mini commands that has a setting and preferences, should you prefer to set it that way. One very nice feature of the command window is the command history, which is something you'll use a lot. Hit the up arrow key on your keyboard to display a list of all the commands that you've entered. If you'd like to repeat one, simply highlight it and hit enter. If you want to bring one back for further changes, just highlight it and hit the left or right arrow on your keyboard, edit the line, and hit enter. The command history is saved when you shut down MATLAB so those commands will still be available to you in your next session. This next command is one you'll use all the time. To clear the screen in the command window, type CLC, short for Clear Command Window. This only clears the command window screen. It doesn't erase the command history or any stored results of anything you did there. Notice that the ANS variable still exists in the workspace. We'll stop there for this episode. Join us for part two, where we'll look at the workspace and the details window, including an introduction to variables.